Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to install these headers on your Ford car or truck. Now these headers here are for the 5.8 liter and you can tell here by the EGR port located right here. The 302 liter will actually have the EGR port located up here in this vicinity. Now the nice thing about these headers is they come with the full complete hardware kit and gaskets. I did purchase a separate set of hardware just in case I needed it. Now this truck here is a 1995 Ford Bronco. It's my wife's truck and I did notice that she has an exhaust manifold leak on the passenger side. So instead of getting into that and trying to fix it, I just happened across these headers here for a really good price. So I'm going to show you guys how to install these. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is disconnect your battery. Now use a rust penetrant like a WD-40 or a PB blaster and coat all of your exhaust bolts just to kind of loosen up these bolts a little bit since they're going to be rusted on there pretty nicely. What I like to do is I like to actually do this maybe a day before I actually start this process. It'll really help loosen up those bolts. Now make sure to coat the flange bolts as well. Next remove the bolts. Now remove the other side. And just let the white pipe hang. Next remove your intake boot so you can have a little bit more access to your headers. Next remove all your plug wires and get them out of the way. Next you're going to want to remove whatever bracketry you have connected to your header bolts. So on the driver's side I had an engine mount bracket, a dipstick bracket which I'm taking off right now, and the ignition coil bracket. You're going to have to remove all of these and just set them off to the side. Now in this scenario, I couldn't get this stud bolt off without the exhaust shield being stuck in place. As you can see, the whole stud itself is moving and the nut is not coming off the stud. So it is going to mangle the exhaust manifold shield, but that's okay. I'm not intending on reusing these anyways. So if this happens to you, this shield is actually made of some pretty thin material. So you can just bend it a few times and it'll actually snap off. Just like that. And then you can just remove your shield out of the way. Now for the passenger side, we're gonna have to remove the EGR, especially the EGR downpipe here that connects into the header. So unplug your EGR and remove the vacuum. Spray these EGR nuts here, because they can be pretty tight as well, and rust it on. Loosen the EGR pipe nut. Now remove your EGR. Next, remove your engine ground. On this passenger side, we only have this one bracket here. It is the intake manifold bracket, and it bolts down to the exhaust manifold stud. So remove this stud here as well. On the passenger side, you have the air pump hoses and tubes. They are also bolted to the same stud as the intake bracket is. So once you remove that nut, you can just set off these air tubes to the side and remove that bracket. Now the EGR tube nut's going to be on there pretty tight, so make sure you spray that as well. It's easier to remove this spark plug first, and then that way you can access this nut with a wrench. So remove this spark plug. Now this is going to be a tight fit, but you can get a crescent wrench down here and crack this nut loose. And then just basically work it off. Then remove your EGR pipe. Now we're back on the driver's side. We have all the bracketry removed off the passenger and driver's side. The headers are ready to come off now. And I do want to point out, this is an important note, a lot of these header bolts tend to snap off inside the block. So if you want to avoid snapping them, we do have them fully soaked in a penetrating oil, but that might not be enough. What you're going to want to do 
is try to loosen one of these studs. And if you get it to move just a little bit, then what you want to do is re-tighten it the same amount that you loosened it. So you're basically going to work the bolts. Repeat the step. So loosen it first a little bit and then re-tighten it. So continue to work the rest of the bolts, loosen them a little bit, and then tighten them down. It does take some patience. Like I said, this could take you maybe a couple of hours to do, but it's well worth it, because who wants to break a bolt inside of an engine? And now you can remove your manifold. So you can see we were able to successfully remove all of the header bolts without snapping a single one. So let's go ahead and do the passenger side next. The passenger side's a little snug, but it's actually doable. So just take your time and remove all of your header bolts. And now you can remove the manifold from the top or the bottom. I'm choosing to remove it from the top because I can actually wiggle it free between all this stuff. All right, so we got both headers out. Now I do want to point out that my headers were leaking here by the collector, as you can see. Both of these studs are pretty stripped and worn out and rusted. And instead of going through the hassle of trying to get those studs out, I just chose to go with these headers here since they're going to be a performance upgrade. Not too much performance. And just the sheer weight savings alone. I mean, these are cast iron and they're pretty heavy. So those pretty much weigh half as much. Now you can tell the original hardware is very spent. These almost broke inside the block. These were very hard to remove. It took me a couple of hours of loosening, tightening, and loosening and tightening. So just take your time, they'll come out. It's well worth the effort to actually spend that amount of time and not break these inside the block. And since the block is probably just as rusted as those bolts, I'm going to use my tap and die set and chase the threads inside the block and freshen them up so I can get ready to install the new hardware. So let's get started on that next. Okay, so you're gonna wanna coat your bit with a lubricant like WD-40 so it protects the bit and goes into the block much smoother. Make sure when you thread it into the block, you go in nice and straight and jiggle it around until you know it grabs really good. And then just turn the tap a little bit at a time and keep turning in a forward fashion, going forward and back. Once you have it threaded in enough, pull it out and clean the bit. Now I like to rinse off my bit with WD-40. Just spray it and get all the dirt off of it. You can see how much was inside that block. Some of it's going to be dirt, some of it's going to be rust, and some of it's going to be shavings from the old bolt. Make sure to keep the bit lubricated and continue to work the block. Keep cutting into the block until this bit threads in really easily. Once you're finished with the driver's side, do the passenger side. Now before you install your header, make sure your engine block is real clean. Make sure to scrape off any excess carbon buildup. I've already done that to this one, I'm just giving it a wipe down. Now since these headers have like a flange style to them, we're gonna have to remove the dipstick and then install the header. And now we can finally install the header. Now this kit came with these small bolts so I'm going to use these larger bolts just to set the header in place. Once the header is set into place, then I'm going to switch to the smaller bolts. Be sure to keep the header a little loose until all the bolts are in. Once you have all the hardware in, give them a snug fit. Now I chose to leave this engine bracket out, but for the meantime I actually don't need it and I think it looks better without it. I'm also going to leave out the ignition coil bracket as well because I also don't believe it needs it and it looks better without it. Now for the dipstick you are going to have to install a stud right in this area here. The original dipstick was installed here 
but as you can see this pipe's not going to allow for a stud so you can just finagle the dipstick and install it in this location right here so make sure before you install your dipstick to install a new o-ring right here carefully guide your dipstick into place make sure it's seated all the way in now i've already went to finagle town on this one so she already seats in pretty decently so just get in there like that and then tighten your nut Now on the passenger side, you're gonna to have to install a stud right here for your air tubes and then your intake support. So I have this header here nice and snug. So before we install this support, let's do the EGR. Install your EGR. Plug it in and be sure to connect the vacuum. Install the EGR pipe, tighten it down. Next, install the intake support. Connect your ground and tighten it down. Connect all your spark plug wires. Now we're going to install the Y pipe to the headers using our new hardware. Install your new studs into the flange. Now tighten up your flange bolts and be sure to tighten them up evenly. Connect your intake boot. And lastly, connect your battery. All right, guys, we're all done. They're looking fresh. Let's see how they sound.